My video Octagon Rules Over Pentagon has been banned in the US for obvious reasons because Octagon and the Swiss really do rule over the US. Watch the Pharaoh show and Octagon the Empire of Darkness to see how the Templars founded Switzerland and the Swiss banks. The Swiss never really integrate when they move to another country and when they expand it to the United States. They kept organizing in their Swiss Vereins and secret clubs. Okay, you might want to say, then what about the Chinese and the Chinatowns or the Orthodox Jews in their self-chosen ghettos? Well, these people look obviously different in their funny clothes and customs and you can pick them out from a mile. Whereas the Swiss look just like the majority of the American population and therefore find no difficulties at all in hiding and infiltrating and taking over. And if you look at their numbers in Wikipedia, you can see for yourself that there are more Swiss in America than there are Jews and Chinese altogether. And some of these Octagon Templar Swissies even made US President as Herbert Hoover and Dwight D. Eisenhower. And Herbert Hoover in 1929, who was President, when the Swiss Bank of International Settlements robbed the American people blind on Black Tuesday, October 29, 1929. And this Swiss US President didn't do a thing to help the American people who were starving. I can have a look at it. Look for yourself, you know. It's all here. Governors, govern, governors and presidents, yeah. Herbert Hoover, you can see when. And Dwight D. Eisenhower. And of course we got the other Hoover. A terrible man, Edgar Hoover. It's from the name Huber, Swiss. Their ancestors were named Huber, not Hoover. So there was Huber, the uh, the president, yeah, Hoover, from the Swiss name Huber, and there is the other uh, Hoover. Now there he is, there, J. Edgar Hoover, also Swiss descent. They're all Swiss. They never integrated. They always kept faithful to the motherland, Octagon. Didn't give a damn about the American people. I mean, that's why J. Edgar Hoover killed John F. Kennedy, didn't he? John F. Kennedy wanted to uh, do something about the Federal Reserve. I'll talk about that later. And the Swiss U.S. President, Herbert Hoover, even, or Hoover, had the uh, American children starving during the Great Depression in order to prepare the Americans for war while the US money was used to finance Hitler's war industry. See my film, The Swiss Templars Banks. And Mr. Hoover here even looks like the other Hoover, J. Edgar. You know, the Swiss always, they, they all look the same. So, um, yeah, so this one here is Herbert Hoover. You can all look it up in Wikipedia. So, that's some things about him here. So here you can read it all about Herbert Hoover in uh, Wikipedia, just punch it in, in in Google. So this is interesting, the family background. Well, let's have a look. Uh, the Swiss needed only six months after their man Hoover, or Hoover, was in the White House to execute the greatest robbery ever of the American people. The name Hoover comes from the Swiss German name Huber, the name from his father's side, together with Burkhardt. And both his parents were Quakers, of which you can see the Octagon logo here, just as the CIA logo and the almost like the NATO logo. And here once more the Octagon Quakers logo. And then, additionally, there was another Huber, or Hoover, don't know what to call him anymore, J. Edgar of the FBI, or the FBI, 
who was a Freemason, a pure Swiss member of Octagon of the Templars, and as queer as a broomstick. That's why, when I was in the army, we used to call the FBI the faggot bunch of incest. And look how he looks like the other Hoover. This is the same family. You know, it's almost the same picture as Herbert Hoover, the guy who stole the, uh, the American savings of the public on Black Tuesday um, um, in um, November 1929. With the Federal Reserve and the uh, and the um, and and the Swiss uh, Bank of International Settlements, well, look, he's, it's the same face. It's family. I tell you, it's all. Well, anyway, the Swiss they all look alike. They all look alike. Well, actually, there he is, the other one. I'm I'm very bad with computers, you know. So maybe can, somebody else can uh, uh, draw a comparison and put the pictures together. A couple of pictures so we can so here's the other hoover look it's just the same same breed same breed same face it's, it's all in the family look Herbert Hoover same it's all the Swissies in power believe me and then here in Wikipedia it's this chapter here which is quite interesting early life and education well, let's have a look well, it says he was Swiss German. I know Scheidlin, that's a Swiss name anyway. And Huber, of course. Uh, it says uh, on the left, German Swiss descent. The old Swissies. And there he is again, the Swiss Mr. Huber. And it, I mean, th this is the typical way they are. The way this man behaved, so secretive. And um, with his hatred towards others and using the police and using the uh, hierarchy of, uh, of the system. It's so typical Swiss. I recognize the Swiss in it. And look at it, how he was, he was serving under which presidents he was serving. Well, of course, under John F. Kennedy and in office. And there it says, um, where it says, I'm sorry, I couldn't find it, but here it says he served under Herbert Hoover, the other one, Mr. Hoover and Mr. Hoover. Well, what a nice couple, eh? Well, oh, couple he was, yeah. He liked men, male couples, he did. You know, terrorizing us, normal, healthy people. Octogon and the powers of darkness use many homosexuals because, through their sexual inhibitions and needing to hide it from normal people, homosexuals are very good at keeping secrets and smile. So here we can see J. Edgar Hoover, or Mr. Hoover, together with his boyfriend. But only queers would go out together and dress identically while holding hands, having their sexual appetite written all over their faces. They call it unisex. Nice, charming, isn't it? It's like dressing up for a ball. Now, and here they are again, Mr. and Mrs. Hoover or Hoover, whatever. And there again, like twins, it's so obvious, isn't it? You know, unisex. I don't want to know about the name of the uh, the vacuum cleaner with the same name. God knows what they did with that one. And there they are again, Clyde Tolson and J. Edgar, Mr. Hoover. Well, this is a, uh, a silent code among homosexuals, like dressing up the same way, especially in a time, at the moment, in an era where you shouldn't let others know, you know. So they started developing secret codes, 
uh, like dressing up the same way. Well, it's so obvious, you know. So this is the homosexual code of, that, of those days and still, you know. It's like dressing up for a party. What a cinema. You can probably look it up and dig it out, you know, in some some of those gay communities uh, websites or something, you know, like uh, the dress code, you know, you probably find it, but um, I don't fancy digging too much in that, in it, you know, it's, it's already appalling enough. And in the very same Hoover FBI style, in the motherland of Mr. Hoover, they even have the Swiss Pink Cop organizations. In the very same Octagon Templars tradition of the two Templars sharing one horse together and worshipping Baphomet. Well, I mean, this is Octagon, you know, so... Well, Mr. Hoover would have loved this, or he knew it. Well, this is the symbol of the, uh, of the Knights Templars, you know. Two guys on a horse, nice and warm, cozy together. Just like uh, Clyde Olsen and Mr. Huber dressing up the same way. Well, they dressed up the same way as well, didn't they? Well, you can read some more in the, uh, the Octagon Templars Pink Cup organization after Mr. Huber's style in the, of the motherland, you know? Yeah. And... Uh, they even have a contact somewhere on this, uh, on this website with an email address and all that there, contact. Well, I mean, it's too much for me to do it yourself. And it's by these evil structures, healthy, normal families get terrorized, as me and my family have to endure for 16 years. But we just want to raise our kids in peace. As if these sickos hate us, normal people, just as Mr. Huber hated JFK incredibly much, just for being a good person. So, when Kennedy in his November 15, 1963 speech said, There is a plot in this country to enslave every man, woman and child. Before I leave this high and noble office, I intend to expose this plot. And it only took another seven days after until the Swiss Huber and his pals from the motherland Octagon had him done. Kennedy couldn't expose the Swiss plot any further, but I will. And do save, copy, download and upload this film in haste, because they will ban and delete this document very fast. I think it was last year, this guy here, he made this film, J. Edgar, about Mr. Huber. I wonder if he would made it, if he would have made it differently, if I would have explained to uh, this bloke here about Mr. Huber's genealogy. Who knows? In order to help humanity towards peace and justice, I've put my life in great danger with this video. Please, someone help. All banks are in fact Templars banks by the Swiss. So when Kennedy on June 4th, 1963 signed the executive order number 11,110 against the Federal Reserve in the hands of Octagon, they gave Swiss Mr. Huber the order to execute the job, just as they murdered Wolfgang Umfogel in the Swiss torture detention center in 2010 and many, many, many more. Then Lyndon B. Johnson became president after the Swissies had put aside the obstacle and LBD is a direct descendant of William the Conqueror, King of England, who was his 23rd great-grandfather. Yes, it's all fair aristocracy who rule. The old world order and this is the new world order with their Freemason things. And the Templars are part of it as well, as I explained in uh, the film Fair Aristocracy. 
You can all see how Mr. Huber, or Hoover, both of them, was just as secretive and ruthless as the Swiss are. Really nothing leaks out, and they keep tight by the Swiss laws of silence of octagon. And because the Swiss and Mr. Huber are as precise as a Swiss watch, also Robert Kennedy had to be terminated, together with a few other Kennedys. I wonder if his wife Jacqueline had put on her pink dress and pink hat to please Mr. Huber on that very day on November the 22nd, 1963 in Dallas, when they killed the best president America has ever had. Only two presidents have acted against the Federal Reserve, and both of them hit the deck before their time, Kennedy and Abraham Lincoln. And now the only US president in the entire American history has dropped a couple of Swiss banks. Is he really trying, or is he just being pushed by some senators or something? It is highly suspicious though that he's on the Swiss list too. Well here he is. See my video about this. So this is the Swiss Americans list. List of Swiss Americans. In Wikipedia. I already showed it to you. So here's the other uh, Wikipedia website about the Swiss Americans. Uh, let's have a look at the facts, where they went to, and when it started. So right after the Middle Ages, which officially ended in 1500, so from 500 to 1500, that's the Middle Ages, the Swiss started to come to America in the 1500s. And the first Swiss to come was Theobald from von Erlach. Uh, the name von it means it's an, it's a it's the aristocracy, so he was a nobleman of the fair aristocracy, whose family name I filmed in the Templar's castle of my video, the Pharaoh Show, and he told all his pals, just as the Swiss mercenaries did in Alsace, when they emptied the land of its inhabitants and killed them all and their children, during the Thirty Year War, so the Swiss could settle down there. And they still speak a Swiss dialect in Alsace, France. Similarly, how they organized the murder of the Jews by their Templar Nazis. It was all Swiss made. <coughs> so you can see the, uh, where they went to. And let's have a look at some immigration statistics concerning the Swissies in the US. Before 1820, some 30,000 Swiss immigrated the US. Between 1860 and 1880, 50,000 Swissies. 1881, 1890, 82,000. Next 30 years, 90,000. After 1945, 25,700. Between 1961 and 1990, 29,100. Adding up to at least 330. 300,000 Swiss Americans immigrating to the, o to the US. So considering California had 117,700 and Ohio had 86,147 Swiss Americans counting 2007. They must be in their millions today, maybe up to 20 million Swiss from a country founded by the Templars, not really integrating and going for the key positions of the American society and crushing the US values as Swiss Mr. Huber 1 and Swiss Mr. Huber 2 did and millions of them transforming America into a dictatorship just as the motherland in the Alps. see some more facts here and here so many US cities were founded by the Swiss as Sacramento Pittsburgh and Denver 
thus explaining the funny things going on at Denver Airport with a massive amount of Masonic symbols showing the real identity uh, of the place. So Denver Airport, here it says Timmerman Metals, it's all Swiss. Well, no wonder the New World Order is all Swiss and it's uh, Templar stuff, that's why. And Denver was um, founded by the Swissies. These are proofs, folks. Denver Airport, Denver founded by the Swiss Pharaohs. I told you so. It's them ruling the world, folks, and they founded Denver. So this is why there's a concentration of pharaonic stuff there. Wake up! These are the ones. Wake up! A whole forest of pyramids on top of Denver Airport. So this is the stone I showed before Denver Airport. Do you see the Templar symbol behind? The V there? And the first settler, von Erlach, I think it was in the Pharaoh, it was in the Pharaoh show, and I think it was behind his name, family name, there was the same symbol. Do you remember? Well, go and have a look. <laughs> and this too, apparently, is Denver Airport, so in your suitcase, a little Swiss reptilian traveling with you. What charming, isn't it? The Swiss, just as the J. Edgar Hoover, or Huber, are very secretive people, full of hatred towards the world and other people, who after Black Tuesday, World War II, are still robbing the American people through tax evasion with their ruthless, highly criminal Swiss Nazi Templar banks, getting trillions of dollars from all over the world through tax evasion today. So it's not bank robbers robbing the banks, it's the banks robbing the people. And they're Swiss. The banks are Templar banks. All banks. There are no Jewish banks. It's all Templar banks. It's Swiss. Wake up, people. Yeah, Dwight D. Eisenhower, president. Swissy. Dwight D. Eisenhower was also one of them. From the Swiss name Eisen, meaning iron, and Hauen, to hit. The Swiss name for a blacksmith or a smith. So this is the... Um, the uh, Swiss list again here. So it's uh, the Swiss list. There it is. And there are many more. See my other videos about the financing of Adolf Hitler by the Swiss. I don't want to repeat it here. Thus, the Swiss from Octagon having their agents on both sides, Adolf Hitler financing Zurich by uh, Swiss General Ulrich Wille from 1923 on and the Supreme Commander of the Allied Forces during World War II Five Star General Dwight D. Eisenhower, a Swiss. Here you can see him doing the, the Templar's V symbol just on Den as on Denver Airport and uh, just as the first uh, Swiss immigrant almost in the Middle Ages into the uh, Americas uh, von Erlach with the, the V symbol in its coat of arms. And then there's Appis, uh, the advanced passenger information system with the, with the double V, like Denver Airport, Appis, advanced passenger system. It's the Templars, boys. Well, no wonder. The Allies had Switzerland get away with the Nazi gold without invade, invading the damn place. No wonder the Allies did nothing about thousands of US airmen in the three Swiss concentration camps. See my video about that. No wonder all these young soldiers got sacrificed on 666 D-Day. See my video about Omaha Beach. No wonder the OSS, Office of Strategic Services, was tied with both hands concerning the Red House files and no wonder the Allies under Swiss command never bombed the railway tracks leading to Auschwitz and other camps. Here you can see him with the double V symbol of the Templars. 
The Trax would have been such an easy target with no AA, anti-aircraft, flak, nothing. But Swiss Octogon was too busy filling their Swiss Templar banks with Nazi gold, ordering their Eisenhower Swiss Octagon agent not to interfere on that side of the agenda. Both Eisenhower parents were Mennonites who, as Anabaptists, massively left Switzerland for America. And in, in, so here we can see that we are so happy to die for them. Stop waging their wars. And think of Swiss sleeper agent Alec Jones with his Swiss logo and Templar's V and how they murdered the real deal Bill Cooper. It's the same V you just saw uh, Dwight D. Eisenhower make. Templar's V. There's a lot of disinfo in the internet about Alex Jones, that he's a Zionist Jew and all that, but he doesn't show any Jew stars or Jew symbols. No. He shows Swiss crosses and Templar Vs, never talking bad about Switzerland. And his middle name is Teutonic, Emmerich or Emmerich, meaning the leader or the Führer, just as the other shouter who got financed by Switzerland. Funny middle name for a Jew, isn't it? <laughs> I don't give a rat's ass if you want to blame the Jews for it all, because I don't belong to them. But I do mind that the real enemy will slip away again, the Octagon Templars from Switzerland, and I do mind injustice and lies. By the way, Roland Emmerich, the famous Hollywood movie director from Germany, has the same Teutonic name family name as AJ's middle name. This is Templar stuff. This is as his V and he's showing the Swiss cross on his logos as I showed in my other videos. Come on people wake up wake up see the signs see the see the proofs look at the facts. So this is from my other video you can see the title on top and um, well, I mean he's showing Templar signs Swiss logos the V's and uh, these are the facts so this is what Alex Jones is all about this is what he's showing look at the movie look at this video and you see more proofs of that I can tell you of many more Swiss infiltrators who deliberately destroyed the US and American values but the list would be too long so for the moment I mainly stick with the two Hoovers or two Swiss Mr. Hoover and the Swiss blacksmith who so devastatingly betrayed the American people and brought misery to the world. Because you can all check it out yourselves as these are solid proofs and both Swiss Mr. Hoobers and their hideous crimes dealt with the Federal Reserve and the Swiss Nazi BIS Bank of International Settlements in 1929 on Black Tuesday and in 1963 in Dallas. The Swiss were in it every time. I am quoting JFK and his speech about the Swiss Octagon's secret societies and the enemy within, whom I intensively have revealed in my videos. Please, someone help my children. The very word secrecy is repugnant in a free and open society. And we are, as a people, inherently and historically opposed to secret societies, to secret oaths, and to secret proceedings. We decided long ago that the dangers of excessive and unwarranted concealment of pertinent facts far outweighed the dangers which are cited to justify it. Even today, there is little value in opposing the threat of a closed society by imitating its arbitrary restrictions. Even today, there is little value in ensuring the survival of our nation if our traditions do not survive with it. And there is very grave danger that an announced need for increased security will be seized upon by those anxious to expand its meaning to the very limits of official censorship and concealment. That I do not intend to permit 
to the extent that it's in my control. And no official of my administration, whether his rank is high or low, civilian or military, should interpret my words here tonight as an excuse to censor the news, to stifle dissent, to cover up our mistakes, or to withhold from the press and the public the facts they deserve to know. For we are opposed around the world by a monolithic and ruthless conspiracy that relies primarily on covet means for expanding its sphere of influence, on infiltration instead of invasion, on subversion instead of elections, on intimidation instead of free choice, on guerrillas by night instead of armies by day. It is a system which has conscripted vast human and material resources into the building of a tightly knit, highly efficient machine that combines military, diplomatic, intelligence, economic, scientific, and political operations. Its preparations are concealed, not published. Its mistakes are buried, not headlined. Its dissenters are silenced, not praised. No expenditure is questioned, no rumor is printed, no secret is revealed. I revealed it for you, Mr. President. Mission accomplished, sir, half a century later. From 1963 to 2013, taking exactly 50 years. Let's act now. <laughs>